Okay. And then I'll start the recording. Hey, everyone. Hello. I think the only person we're missing right now is Carol, but they're usually like right on time. Good evening, everyone. Steve. Hi. Good to see you. So you probably won't see them, but our four interns, our archaeology interns from Willamette, are one of their requirements is to watch uh, Landmarks Commission meetings. So they will watch either the recording of tonight or I'm not sure, um, maybe, maybe they'll try to come next month, but just so you know, we have them and they're gonna be watching. <laughs> and we do have all the settings ready to go. We've got two more minutes. I, oh, I went fast, okay. Woohoo, you're on it. Um, we still got Carol. So we're missing? Um, Patricia's not, or Patty's not coming. I always oh, okay. read her full name and then I want to call her Patricia, but I know she prefers to call her. But, uh, so St Steve and Brett, do you have any questions? This is your first hearing, just processy wise or anything like that. I know you went and had that training with Lisa. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, I was kind of, um, or rather I should ask at least, is it, my assumption to kind of watch y'all and see like how this process unfolds uh, and then um, ask any questions and offer um, offer my, my recommendation at the end of the questioning process. Is that kind of what we're going for here? Yeah, I think Tracy will guide you pretty well. Wonderful. Yeah, Tracy, so yeah, and if you do have questions, don't, don't hesitate to ask at any step of the way. Great, <laughs> great. So I had one, one thought there. Um, is it contingent um, that SHPO approve something that we approve or? No, they're separate processes, okay. separate they, programs, separate that? requirements, yeah. But, but we do ask them for their input, which is why that information was included. Good question. We're ready as soon as it hits 5.30. <clears throat> nice noise to let me know it's 5 30. awesome i will now call to order the march 18th meeting of the salem historic landmark commission will the recorder please take roll call commissioner cottingham here commissioner kurtiman here commissioner french here commissioner fuller here Commissioner Ponce? Here. Commissioner Schwartz? Here. Commissioner Thomas? Here. Commissioner Zimmerman? Here. And Commissioner Mulvihill, absent excused. Uh, we have established quorum. Awesome. Thanks, Zach. And uh, welcome back, uh, Jamie and Kelly. Excited you guys have power again. We missed you in February. Uh, so the commission will now hear testimony from the public concerning items not on the agenda. Is there anyone wishing to speak at this time? We do not currently have anyone logged in to speak. Perfect. So seeing none, we will now consider the approval of the minutes from the, oh no, February 16th, 17th? February 18th. Meeting? February 18th meeting. Thank you. Uh, may I please have a motion to approve the minutes? Move to approve minutes. <clears throat> from oh, February 18th. Who seconded? Sorry. Uh, Zimmerman. Awesome, thank you. So Commissioner Thomas moves to approve the minutes and Commissioner Zimmerman seconds. Are there any corrections? I have one. Uh, Tom uh, is listed as being at the meeting, but he was not. Are there any other corrections? All right, hearing no other corrections, uh, Commissioner, so can we just uh, move to approve the minutes with corrections or do, does that need to be a separate motion? I think you move to adopt a friendly change to the motion or I, I don't know the technical direction. All right, all those uh, in favor of 
correcting or is there a motion to correct the minutes? You know, sorry, Tracy, you don't need oh. another motion. You can just oh, okay. move to adopt with corrections. Okay, perfect. So uh, all those in favor of adopting with corrections, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. All right, the uh, minutes uh, with corrections pass. So now we will, um, let me just make sure I'm not skipping anything. Nope, okay. Uh, so I will now open the public hearing for historic case review HIS 21-01 for 296 14th Street Northeast. Would the recorder please read the hearing procedures statement into the record? This is a public hearing to consider case number HIS 21-01 for property located at 296 14th Street Northeast. The criteria applicable to this hearing are listed in Salem Revised Code, Chapter 230.065, General Guidelines for Historic Contributing Resources. Failure to raise an issue prior to the close of the public hearing with statements or evidence sufficient to afford the Historic Landmarks Commission and the parties an opportunity to respond to the issue precludes appeal to the hearings officer on that issue. A similar, similar failure to raise constitutional issues related, relating to proposed conditions of approval precludes an action for damages in circuit court. Prior to the conclusion of the hearing, any participant may request an opportunity to present additional evidence or testimony. The Historic Landmarks Commission will then in either continue the public hearing or leave the record open for at least seven days. Awesome, thank you. Um, are there any conflicts of interest or ex parte contacts that any commissioner would like to declare at this time? Commissioner French? Um, this document was reviewed by my office, the State Historic Preservation Office, though it was not within my review authority and I don't have any knowledge of it and I can be fair and unbiased in my decision today. Awesome, thank you, Commissioner French. Are there any other conflicts of interest or ex parte contacts? If you're raising your hand, uh, let me scroll through really fast. All right, I don't see any. Uh, so may we now have the staff presentation. Hi, I'm Kimberly Fitzgerald, the Historic Preservation Officer for the City of Salem. This is a major historic design review for HIS 2101, and I'd like to enter the staff report, its attachments, and all public testimony into the record. So this property is located at 296 14th Street Northeast. It is a contributing resource in the Court Chemeketa Historic District. I just wanna also state for the record, apologies for the error on the cover page where I inadvertently referred to the wrong address in the report that was just sent to the commissioners and we sent a, a corrected report. Um, so hopefully you all have that. Uh, this Queen Anne is known as the William H. Bird House. It was built by George Collins in 1887. It was originally at 197 Court and moved to its present location in 1906. The kitchen was added at this time, um, attached to the eastern end of the rear facade. In 1927, uh, the porch was added to the northern end of this um, kitchen addition. The resource is currently on special assessment, uh, which is a program administered through the Oregon State Historic Preservation Office, where they work with the property owner to develop a long-term preservation plan. Um, in compliance with their requirements. Uh, so in 2017, just a bit of background, the Landmarks Commission approved HIS 17-16, which authorized, authorized the restoration uh, of the original 1887 portion of the resource. Uh, then in 2018, the HLC approved a modification of that original approval authorizing the addition of fencing um, at the eastern end of the property. Uh, at that time, the applicant had originally included the current request relating to the kitchen and porch modifications, but due to budget constraints at that time, she, she chose to withdraw it. So tonight um, you're considering uh, a, a proposal. I'm gonna give you a, an overview first, and then I'm gonna break it down into parts so that it's hopefully pretty clear to understand what is being proposed. So the applicant is proposing to install a new driveway uh, parking area at the Eastern end of the site. Um, there are, she's also proposing to install a new foundation under that existing porch and kitchen there at the Eastern end. On the East facade, she's proposing to uh, 
remove the existing stairs and construct new stairs on the on northern end and remove and relocate windows, siding, and doors, and relocate uh, the exterior wall within the existing footprint to create a covered porch there on that northern facade. Uh, so I've colored the um, site plan here. And so where the green uh, generally reflects the 1926 um, Sanborn, which you can see on your screen, showing that uh, initial kitchen addition uh, and then the pink shows that later 1927 porch edition. Uh, the applicant can perhaps speak a little bit more about the evolution of the house, uh, but it's thought that the 1887 back porch was originally in that um, upper section there on your screen. So now I'm gonna go through um, piece by piece. So please, if anything is, you need clarification, just don't hesitate to ask. So uh, the applicant's proposing, as I mentioned, a new uh, driveway parking pad. So this uh, is proposed to be approximately 12 feet by 40 feet long, located east of the rear of the house underneath the existing pergola. Uh, she's proposing a new uh, vehic vehicular gate to provide access to this parking area. And uh, that gate will be comprised of cedar and uh, topped by lattice to match what's existing there at the rear of the house. So on the south elevation, the applicant is proposing to remove the existing kitchen window and install a new four over five uh, multi-light window, as you can see there on your screen. Uh, on the eastern facade, as I mentioned, um, the applicant's proposing to remove those existing stairs and doorway and the two screened openings there on the northern end and remove that existing kitchen window there on the southern end of that um, eastern facade and is proposing to install four new uh, <clears throat> wood frame single light 30 inch by 80 inch windows on that southern end and then install two new double hung windows on the northern end. And um, new wooden stairs will be constructed as I mentioned on that northern end of this facade leading to that, um, that small porch. So here we're looking at the northern um, facade. So um, as I mentioned, the applicant is proposing to uh, move that exterior wall uh, back to create a new covered wooden porch. Uh, I, I did want to note that within that interior, uh, the existing raised floor at the western end of this porch, uh, which is about a foot, um, one foot three inches higher than the rain portion will will remain as is, that, that's to explain the, the lift that you're seeing. Um, the two relocated kitchen windows will be installed on either side of the um, exterior kitchen entry door, which will be relocated in that exterior facade there. And uh, siding will be replaced um, as much as possible to match existing on all uh, of the facades, including this one. So now I'm gonna go through the applicable criteria found in SRC 230065. So A, re relating to the use. So the original use as a residence will be maintained. Um, B and C, relating to uh, treating historic features with sensitivity. The applicant is proposing to maintain the existing footprint and height uh, of the kitchen and porch additions and is proposing to reuse uh, windows and doors and siding in order to retain as much material as is feasible from these uh, later additions. And uh, the proposal will not impact the original 1887 portion of the birdhouse. So staff recommends Landmarks Commission find that SRC 230065 A, B, and C have been met for this proposal. Moving on to D. The applicant isn't proposing to restore any features. Therefore, staff recommends the Landmarks Commission find that this guideline does not apply to the evaluation of this proposal. Guideline E, uh, the applicant is proposing to alter the 1927 porch and 1906 kitchen, which have acquired significance uh, as, as they were added to that original 1887 birdhouse. 
And uh, while the applicant is proposing to enlarge the existing uh, openings on the south and east facades, and some original material will be lost from these additions, uh, they are located on rear and interior facades, not easily visible from the right of way and therefore minimizing the adverse effect uh, of these alterations. Therefore, staff recommends Landmarks Commission find that guideline E has been met. Moving on um, to the next set of guidelines, F and G. Uh, while the proposed new windows within the kitchen, uh, as I mentioned on the south and east facades are significantly larger in scale than the existing windows, um, they, they are located at the rear and interior facades. Uh, the, the relocation of the stairs and the alterations to create that small covered porch and entry at the north are, uh, ensure that the original footprint is retained and the height is not increased and they're compatible in scale with um, the original uh, 1887 portion of the birdhouse um, and minimizing changes to that uh, most significant portion of the resource and meeting SRC 230065F and G. So regarding H, the applicant's proposal is intended to correct structural deficiencies at this end of the house where the foundation is needing repair. Uh, the additional work proposed is to ensure the foundation um, remains stable moving into the future. So staff recommends the landmarks mission find that um, guideline H has been met. Oops, ah, guide one more thing to talk about. Um, and then the last one related to grading. While uh, the proposal will include a minimal amount of um, excavation and grading as part of the installation of the parking area, that proposed work will not occur directly adjacent to the resource and does not have the potential to adversely affect um, its integrity. So staff recommends the Landmarks Commission find that guideline I has been met. So uh, we've received um, no comments from the public, no comments from the um, Neighborhood Association. We have received city department comments from planning, building and safety and public works relating to the proposal. Uh, and SHPO uh, did review the proposal back in 2017. I did include some comments related to that, but um, while comments, I mean, a request for comments have been sent to SHPO, we have not received anything uh, as of today from um, the SHPO regarding this proposal. So based upon the information presented in the application and the plan submitted for review, uh, and findings as presented this evening, staff recommends the Landmarks Commission approve the proposal. That concludes the staff report. And I can stop sharing if that makes it easier. It, it does, but um, if people are gonna want you to flip through slides, I think I saw a head nod. So if you guys can just make sure uh, you raise your hand in the Zoom function, um, that, that way I can see. I'll, we'll make this work, Kimberly. Um, awesome. So uh, thank you. Uh, do any of the commissioners have questions for staff? Commissioner French. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just have a couple. Um, so I see here that Joy from the special assessment program, uh, special assessment program with the SHPO kind of talked a little about this. Is this speaking, um, is this part of her, of the applicants um, special assessment plan, these renovations that we're seeing here today? So I, I think that the applicant can speak more uh, articulately about this. I have a copy of the preservation plan that was submitted back in 2017, and it did include the kitchen and porch alterations at that time, but I don't know that they were to this level of specificity. So I think that Connie might be able to more accurately answer that question. I, and I do, um, sorry, and I do recall back in 2017, uh, we coordinated a site visit so that uh, Joy, myself, and Connie did walk through this end of the, um, the additions and talked through what Connie's plans were. Okay. Um, and then I had one more question, and that's the new, they're proposing to add new windows. Is 
Do we have any discussion of material type for the new windows? Is it going to be in keeping with the period of the house? Right. So the all the, the windows that Connie has proposed, and there are pictures, um, uh, they're salvaged windows. So they're uh, wood. Let me see if I have a picture. There's one picture of the one on this, the southern side. And in your packet, you should have um, pictures of her entire proposal. So the short answer is yes, wood. <laughs> I, I can maybe clarify a little bit too. Oh, the, if you could hold on for a second, Connie. Oh, sorry. sorry. To, nope, you're okay. totally fine. I know it's you'll you get ready. an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, are there any other uh, questions for staff? Uh, Kimberly, I had a couple of questions. Um, do we have a photo of what it looks like? There were stairs leading up to this door, some type of access. Do we have a photo of what that was prior to their removal? The on the north side, you mean? Yes, I do, but I would need to stop sharing and go find it. Do you mind if I do that? <laughs> uh, do you? Maybe do you want to hunt for that when Connie's giving her? Sure. Thank you. Cool. Yes, I'm happy to do that. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate it in advance. And then I had another question um, about that north elevation, just to make sure I'm understanding uh, correctly. So it looks like, um, so they are going to extend the roof line to create a covered, to make it covered? Or does no, it currently no, it's extend not, far right. enough? No, it's not going to be extended. The wall, um, the wall is going to be brought back and forgive me let me go back oh. to the maybe looking at the footprint which I've covered in colors so it oh, might sorry, be hard okay. to see so it's going to be brought back to the edge of where that pink is okay. does that make sense it does yes okay so, so the it's not going to be extended it's it's going to be created out of the existing so we would be losing that uh kind of door into the the basement no, that would be retained. Okay, it would be, okay. So, and she's got a elevation, forgive me, let me go back to where it's showing the. Okay. So um, the door to the basement will be retained. Um, the, that wall on the second floor will be pulled back and the entry to that um, kitchen area will will be retained it's just pulled back okay and windows up. okay perfect thank you <laughs> does that make sense okay. it does yeah sorry these two pictures I was like wait what am I looking at I think I it's know. the same it's thing but like one has a door so. yeah okay uh, perfect thank you Kimberly uh, Commissioner Thomas questions for staff yeah just on the I guess the staff drawing that had north southeast west on it I got, I got a little bit lost because it didn't seem to, yeah, that one right there. I, isn't the north elevation at the top of the drawing? No, not in this drawing. So north is uh, fronting Chemeketa. And right, right, okay. I mean, normally oh, you would I see. have north okay. at the top I'm of looking the at it as the whole, okay, I see what I missed. Okay, I got it, thanks. Is it clear now? Yes, sorry. Okay, it's okay. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. Commissioner Kruderman. Yeah, um, I don't know if I missed this, but the the doors. So if you go back to that diagram that you were looking at um, with Tracy, where it showed the or the north sign. Correct. There. Yeah. Yeah. So the 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 diagram kind of shows different doors looks like a door with a, a decorative window maybe. I don't know if that's just the diagram itself or if that's the intent of the doors. So the doors that are currently on there, are they getting reused at all anywhere or? Yes, yeah, so the, so the, so on this facade and again, the, <clears throat> the, the existing door will be reused and retained. There was some question about whether building and safety would be requiring a new door for different reasons, but because of the alternative uh, building code allowing more flexibility for designated resources, um, <clears throat> this the original door can be used, reused here. Okay. 
Does that answer your question? I think so. So the two doors that we're seeing that's existing currently on, on this north side are just going to be used. Re yeah, there's nothing going to be changed on the one. Okay. And, and then, but they'll just be, that one will be pulled back. So right. it'll be in, right. and okay. the screen and the screen door will from the south facade will be placed on this. Okay, thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions from staff? Or for staff, sorry. Uh, Commissioner Fuller. Uh, yeah, in, in a similar question as to um, older photographs, I'm looking at the, the porch on this north elevation that we have, and I'm wondering, do we have any, uh, any imagery of any kind of previous porch or railing specifically that the building once had? Um, is there, is there anything that could be drawn from as to the kind of style of railing that is put up around this porch, which also, my, am I understanding it correctly, the porch is gonna have that one and a half foot rise uh, mm -hmm. on its, uh, as it goes west into the building too? Forgive me while I go through to try and hopefully have a picture of the front. Okay. okay. Oh, and to answer Tracy's previous question, there's a picture of the stairs okay. on the slide. You can see, I didn't have to hunt very far. Look, it's right there. Perfect. So, um, and Connie can confirm this, but my understanding is that if you can see the front rail, and these are pictures before work was done on the front of the house, um, there's an example of what that original Again, but that's the 1887 portion, more than likely at the rear of the house. Um, and I'll go back to the Sanborns. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with these, but they show the building footprint and the um, on the this little map here with the D on it, you can see that's where the original kitchen edition was. And it, there was a thought that the 1887 porch was originally back back there, but I've not found any pictures. I don't know when, when Connie testifies, she can speak to whether she's ever seen photos of the back. I don't know. Okay, cool. All right, that, yeah, that covers it for me. Thank you. Commissioner Ponce. So yes, I, I'm just wondering about the, um, the elevation that, that uh, we were looking at that shows the, the porch um, in plan view there. Uh, Am I on the right screen? No. No, but it's uh, I think the last the last screen, uh, the last slide. The, which of that the one? Uh, that one? Well, this one helps explain I think what I'm what okay. I'm about <laughs> is um, the roof line. In this, it looks like it's a a, a single um, shed roof over the over the porch and the kitchen area. Mm -hmm. But in that the, the proposed drawing where the new door and um, the wall that's set back, it looks like it's, uh, the roof's changed. Um, so my know. understanding is that, and just so you remember, so for, for our requirements, we don't require construction level drawings. So just be really careful about what assumptions you make and Connie can confirm, but based on my understanding, and then there's an engineer's report, um, structural engineer's report as well, that the, the intention is for the roof line to be retained. That's, that's really my question. If there's existing contours are going to remain in the, the slopes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions for staff? All right. Hearing no questions, I will now call for the applicant's testimony. Uh, can you please state your name and address for the record or your business address if you're representing an applicant? Uh, please note your testimony is limited to 15 minutes. Is that me? Okay. <laughs> um, this is, I'm Connie Strong and sorry, I've been out in the rain, um, but my address is 296 14th Street Northeast. And um, yes, this is this is the house that we're now in year five of trying to restore. Kimberly did a great job explaining something that is actually really, really hard to wrap your head around. So don't, it's not her fault if it wasn't immediately obvious. I do have a photo of what 
of the inside of the original porch. So what is not clear from those pictures is that it looks like there's a large rectangular addition on the back of the house because there it's been combined under one big roof. But there are actually three separate structures underneath that one roof. And the original back porch of the house is part of that. And we're not changing that. We're actually uncovering that. And if I can share a picture, um, can I do that? Can I share a picture? Uh, Zach? That should be possible. I am not familiar with Zoom's mobile functions, but you should be able to. Oh, okay. Yep, oh, there it there goes. You go. Do you see that? Okay, so I'll explain what you're looking at here is you're looking at um, you're standing where we are proposing to open up that little porch area. Right now, it's part of an enclosed livable space, but we want to actually reduce the amount of livable space in order to open this up and create a covered entry um, where currently there is none. So what you see in this picture is the outline is the, si the original siding of the original house with the original molding um, around a window. And the way this house is constructed, uh, one of the clues to, you know, kind of how things used to be is always that the architect always defaulted to perfect symmetry. So um, this, essentially the house would have been perfectly symmetrical from the Shemekata side if you were looking at the original house. So this porch is the same dimensions as the one on the front, except that it was enclosed. You can see this window, and then you can see the post or the trim that's to the left. And then there is uh, a door that was relocated from the original back door that's now, they basically just made and closed this little part into a pantry. But inside of that, you can also see where um, there was an original back porch door. So there's good evidence that this was the original, you know, design of the house, even though it's now included under the roof that covers the addition. Does that, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Um, oh no, I think we lost her. Yeah, it looks like um, she accidentally hung up instead of stopped sharing. I will watch for her to join. I'll put a pause on her timer. Thank you. Uh, okay, she's joining again. Okay, perfect. Welcome back. <laughs> Hope you're on mute still. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was not good at doing this on a phone. No obviously. worries. Uh, no, that okay. was incredibly helpful. Uh, we'll let, you, let okay. you keep going. Thank you. Okay. And then just the other thing I wanted to address was the, um, the porch, like what kind of, someone asked about what kind of railing. We don't have any evidence of what any original railing would have been, but from the way the house is built, I doubt there was anything that was maybe even remotely safe. Um, <laughs> the balustrades and the railing that we have on the front of the house are not original. They're all replacements and um, they have to be replaced about every 15 years because they're wood and they just fall apart. And they're very, very expensive. Um, unfortunately to have them all, you know, they have to be turned custom made. So I was not intending to try to recreate on the, that on the back because I don't think it's really appropriate to the style. And I would just kind of want to go with, the era of the addition rather than the era of the original house, which is extremely ornate. So the stairs that we removed um, are, they were, they were totally rotted and unsafe. So we had to take them down and they didn't have any decorative railing on them as you could see from Kimberly's photo. So there's not much to go on there. Um, the plan is just to use, you know, standard straight, typical railing, you know, just the straight slats. And I think that'll go with the original windows and, you know, and with the air of the house. Are there any other questions or that I didn't, oh, I guess I should oh. say that base, sorry, that basement door, that 
was probably just the reason that's bumped up is probably because the ground level rose so much over the last hundred years. We actually did a lot of excavation around the house already to reveal the brick foundation so that because the, the house itself just basically stayed wet all year round. Um, so in order to preserve it, we had to do a lot of excavation. So we may be able to bring that, that door back down to its original uh, basement entry level. And if so, then we don't have to bump up the railing, but that's something that we have to, and that's not something I can determine ahead of time. Absolutely, thank you so much, Connie. Are there any questions for the applicants? Uh, Commissioner French. I'll go back to one of my original questions is that um, has the, is this all a part of the plan that you submitted to the SHPO for the special assessment program? Is that already in there? Yes, it is. I just submitted an update. Awesome. Uh, Commissioner Kurdeman. Yeah. Um, in in your renovation work with the house, um, in particular outside, um, when you're excavating in, you know, on the grounds, have you come across anything that can help um, further support the history of the house itself? Um, we only, let's see, I think the deepest down I dug was trying to trace all of the different pipes because there were all kinds of different strange pipes coming from different directions. Um, because uh, as with a lot of houses in this neighborhood, the, the gutter system, which was built out of wood, which don't ask me to justify the logic in that, but the gutter system was built out of wood and it, then it was plumbed to these drain pipes that were in the street. So I dug all around the house and I did this by hand. <laughs> so I can testify that there was nothing. I found one little bottle um, that looks like an old liquor bottle. And other than that, there was just a lot of broken glass. So I think most of it was actually just beautiful, rich mulch and compost that had built up from these great big trees over the years. And now we're back down to this, you know, the grade level of the street. Thank you. Are there any other questions for the applicant? I have a question for you, Connie. So um, thank you so much for showing that photo. That was wonderful. So I'm guessing that uh, what you showed us there is how far you're going to push it back to. Um, if that's correct, do you intend to keep uh, those openings and the molding and uh, use those as kind of the guides for the, the windows and doors? Um, yeah, absolutely. In fact, we're using that design of the molding in um, the built-ins that we're doing in the living room. And in, we, ha I mean, we had to rebuild all the walls on the inside of the house. So we're, um, all the original moldings of the house are still here in the house. They're all scraped, restored, repainted, and put back. And that particular one, that window, I think is just one of the neat little features that gives us a clue to the history of the house. And even though Right now, it does not have a window. Um, I'm definitely gonna peel that back and see if maybe there's something inside. We did find one of the original windows boarded up behind four layers of sheetrock um, in a bathroom. And there's a transom window that's all boarded up behind sheetrock in the kitchen. So there could be something there. I don't know, but we will find out. Awesome, thank you so much. Commissioner Zimmerman. Thanks. Uh, I was just kind of curious. Uh, it sounds like it's been a, a, a large undertaking for you. I think I, I heard you mention five years worth of work so far. Uh, I was kind of curious, do you have other kind of projects that you're working on with the house? It sounds like you've, you've done a lot of things over these past five years. And I was just kind of curious to see what, what, what you have next in store for the house, or do you have it kind of the way you're envisioning it uh, once you're all finished up? Um, I would love to be able to unpack my boxes here. I'll just show you the, we are still very much living out of boxes. <laughs> and I think the kitchen is really the big, the big piece. I'm personally at the moment restoring the rest of the moldings on the upstairs. I'm down to the last bedroom, um, and putting up, you know, these 
three inch thick baseboards against the front of the house because there's these great big gaps between the floor and the walls and dealing with floors that go up and down and up and down. So it's, um, yeah, it's an opportunity to listen to lots of very long audiobooks. Well, well, best of luck with the rest of those uh, projects. Thank you. So are there any other uh, questions for the applicant? Uh, seeing no other questions, I just want to point out to everyone if we can all do a Zoom clap. Uh, Connie sat on our stakeholder advisory uh, board last year when we redid our preservation plan. So um, not only thank you for coming tonight, Connie, but thank you for your time uh, last year and helping us get that plan done. It's approved. Um, so, so thank you for that. Uh, is there anyone here representing the Neighborhood Association? Uh, we do not have anyone from the Neighborhood Association. Perfect. So hearing none, I will now call uh, for other testimony. Uh, Zach, is, has anyone signed up for additional testimony? No one has signed up to provide additional testimony. Perfect. Um, uh, so do the commissioners have any additional questions for staff? All right. Uh, Last chance, I'm gonna close the public hearing. Any questions? Three, two, one, all right. Uh, so I will now close the public hearing. Uh, no additional testimony will be accepted at this time without formally reopening the hearing. Uh, do we have a motion? I so move, this is Andy. Uh, to approve? Yes, to, to approve, approve the perfect. Yeah. Yep. Is there a second? I'll second. Awesome. Uh, so Commissioner, sorry, Commissioner Zimmerman uh, moved and Commissioner Cottingham seconded to approve the staff recommendation. Uh, Commissioner Zimmerman to your motion. Uh, I was just going to say that it sounds like it's been a very uh, uh, intensive uh, effort to uh, improve this house and uh, as these come come to uh, our attention in, in the years that I've been involved with the commission, it always you know um, makes me enthusiastic to see such actions happen in our community with these treasures that people are putting in the time and the effort to uh, uh, to uh, bring them back to the glory that they were when they were constructed. So I, I'm enthusiastic to see what this project looks like when it's all completed and. Uh, I hope that uh, there aren't any surprises along the way. It sounds like it's been a lot of work so far. So my hope is that uh, everything works out as, uh, as expected and hoped for for the applicant. Are there any other commissioners that would like to speak to this motion? Commissioner French? Yeah, um, I love this house. It's one of the few Queen Anne's in Salem and it's a, a beautiful example and it, um, it's really a labor of love. I've watched it over the last few years. I used to walk through there on my way home. And so I've watched it come back over the last few years. And really the only way to take care of these historic structures is to have people live in them that care about them. So I really appreciate the work that you guys are doing to keep this as one of the great historic resources in Salem. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner French. Is there any other uh, discussion? Um, I'll Commissioner just- Cottingham. I'll Hi, I'll just add to that, um, that we, we understand how much of an investment uh, this, these type of projects take both with, of course, for money, but as well as just the patience and time. Um, and so, yeah, just to, to reiterate, we really appreciate that. And then it, it's a lot of back and forth, but, um, but it's worth it. And it's what really makes sort of a, a long term, uh, meaningful um, improvement to our historic resources. So I appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner Cottingham. Is there any other discussion? Thank you for spending time on it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, I, I will just kind of close this out here. Um, so I came into this one a little nervous. I was like, oh, those windows look big. There's doors changing, new windows. Um, but I, I'd really appreciate Kimberly walking us through this. Uh, Connie, thank you so much for bringing uh, that photo of the interior um, to kind of see the forensic workings of the house and the, the comings and goings uh, really kind of helped me get a better idea um, of what was happening here. And I feel 
very comfortable and excited about this project uh, to kind of see where it's going. Um, and so, yeah, I, I echo what Commissioner Cottingham said, uh, these houses can be hard, um, but hopefully uh, it's brought you a ton of fun. Um, I'm bummed you didn't find more than just one little bottle. I mean, finding too many artifacts gets you in a bad place, but it would have been cool to have a little shelf of, you know, stuff from your yard. Um, but yeah, just thank you so much for your, uh, your work for preservation in Salem and also uh, for this house. Um, so I will now call for a vote. Um, all those in favor of approving staff recommendations for HIS 21-01, uh, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. All right, uh, I voted yes, I didn't say it, sorry. Uh, the motion passes. Uh, thank you so much, Connie, for coming. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, and have a great rest of your day doing uh, molding. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your gavel shorts? Oh, sorry. It's my, Thank you, uh, Kimberly. It's my bingo uh, pen tonight, so. Nice. Thank you. Awesome. So that was our only public hearing for the evening. Um, we will now move into action items. Uh, I do not see any action items. Are there any that need to be added to the agenda? Kimberly's shaking her head no, so we will move on to discussion items. Uh, the first one we have is Women's History Month uh, proclamation from the mayor. Yeah, so that, um, hopefully you have the actual uh, proclamation itself in your packets. Um, we just wanted to call attention to the fact that March is Women's History Month and that um, it's wonderful that the mayor um, made a proclamation at an earlier council meeting this month. So I just wanted to acknowledge it. And um, if, if you know of any wonderful <laughs> women in history, I feel like, yeah, we should share that with Andy and Andy can push it out on social media. Awesome. Thank you, Kimberly. Yeah, so if anyone has any uh, Salem women in history they'd like to highlight, uh, please let Commissioner Zimmerman know and he can, we can get so many likes. Um, the next item, we have work plan assignment updates and check-in. It looks like April is Cultural Landscape uh, Landscape Architecture Month. Kimberly. Right. So because we don't have enough to do <laughs> in the spring with, you know, Historic Preservation Month in May, one of the items on our work plan was to start doing something in April. And so we do have a, um, a subcommittee uh, and Car Carol has graciously agreed next month to give us a, tell us Carol, are you still up for it? Giving us a short yep. little, little overview. So I think this year we're not gonna do a super whole lot cause we've got a lot going on, but at least we'll begin getting our feet wet and, and next year we can do even more. But I look forward to hearing what Carol has to share next month. Yes. Yeah, I'd be happy to um, sort of share, I can, I, I'm open to suggestions, so please <laughs> send me questions or things you guys want to hear, but I'm happy to provide sort of an intro to, you know, cultural landscapes, sort of what they are, um, how they're recognized in formally in preservation and, and maybe some examples. That would be wonderful. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Cottingham. Looking forward to it. Um, are there any other work plan assignment updates that anyone would like to offer at this time? I know we each kind of sit in our own special thing. So Commissioner Thomas. Yes, hi, we've got, um, I think you all uh, are aware that we have a, a matching grant to do the walking tour plan. And so we're, um, what was it? Monday was the halfway point of that, of that grant. And so we've got a second poll coming out this week to kind of talk to people about maybe what they want to see with the digital content. While um, Kimberly's got a, a rough draft of the, the hard, the physical um, uh, content going, I kind of can show you, I, I don't have it on my computer to, to say, but just hold it up. This is a map that we found for Oregon. And we're kind of gonna try to emulate this when you open it up, it's got the, we open it up and it's upside down. So we need to fix that, Kimberly, to make sure it opens up right side up. But, you know, it's got a map of the, see, so that map of Oregon would just be the map of Salem. And then it fits about 33. It's got 33, 34 properties on it right now. So um, we don't have everything uh, nailed down yet, but 
the first draft of this should be out a um, couple weeks, Kimberly. Yeah, well, that's yeah. We have a we have a pretty aggressive timeline, and we're we're as my grandmother would say, cooking with gas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so we'll have the pieces yeah. of the poll back from then. We're asking, you know, people, do they? You know, this the people, the people. When I say the people, I mean the uh, the um, the other nonprofits that are associated with this project: Deepwood Bush, um, Willamette, um, AC Gilbert House. Like, hey, what do you guys want to see? Do you want it like architecture based? Do you want to talk about the residents? Do you want to talk about the the people that designed it? You know, what are the what are the components that you want to see? And and Jessica's on the committee with me has been helping out as as well. Um, and so from our next, our next step is to get that draft, um, draft done and uh, further review it. I mean, the grant closes in the mid, mid June and um, we should be done at that time. One of the uh, past, there's, there's actually a couple past um, walking tours and one was um, this one, we dug everything up. We had to go to Willamette Center to get this one, but it had a, it had a map of downtown and it had you know um, a bunch of these and then what's it more interesting what Kimberly dug up was the history of this one and you might see those uh, signs around town um, I've only found three but apparently at one point there were 70 of these signs signpost markers and it had you know this map located little dots there's probably some direction we're going but we're gonna have pictures and not just text um but anyways that uh um there's another grant that's available um that came through travel oregon that we are now uh looking at um i'll be writing it monday night apparently and uh getting the first draft ready to go and and our little uh team which include you know bush house uh jessica um who else is um i'm missing what Deepwood. I didn't say Deepwood. Yvonne. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so um, that that grant is due at the end of this month. So really, really short fuse. Not only are we cooking with gas, we have short fuses too. So oh dear. Um, things. <laughs> we hope things don't blow up because of that. Um, oh, the so, letter, Kelly. The letter. Huh. So the letter. So we were um, looking. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. That was the main point of this whole thing. That's right. Thank you so much. <laughs> and so, well, as we're writing this, this grant, um, well, let me say what the grant is for before I tell you about the letter, I have to do that. So the grant, uh, it's up to a hundred thousand dollars, but we're thinking we're going to be around like 25 or 30, depending on everything that's put in that in there. But the, the most important part is to recreate these signs um, not sure if it'll be the same logo on it. I mean, you still have to broach that thing, but the wayfinding is a component. It'll, it, we can qualify, uh, city government applies, and then wayfinding is one of the, the things that will, um, that uh, a category that you can qualify for, for this grant. So one of the things that you usually do with grants, I'm sure all of you have written them before, and you know that letters of support are uh, very helpful to uh, grant applications. And so we had a meeting yesterday afternoon, and um, uh, and we were we thought that um, I guess I'm the liaison to this, right? And so they liaised me to ask you all if we can write a letter of support for this uh, grant. You want to add anything, Kimberly or Zachary, about like what the grant is about, or no? I think you covered it covered it really well. So um, I think that, I think that um, just to clarify what Kelly's asking is, is whether uh, the Landmarks Commission would be comfortable um, directing Tracy to, on behalf of the commission, just write a short letter saying that you support these efforts because they're in line with our work plan. It would we, we would need a motion for that, correct? Yes. So Commissioner Thomas, you wanna see if your motion will get a second? I don't know, is that, am I allowed to? I just, you know, I realized, at the, I realized at the beginning of the movie, I wasn't even at the um, the meeting. I did read the minutes and I did move for them to be approved. I thought they were, thought everyone was there. Sorry about that. But um, yes, I I would like to um, move that the, the commission, the Historic Landmarks Commission, write a letter of support for the travel 
Travel Oregon grant um, that we're in the middle of drafting um, uh, for the uh, for the, the wayfinding and other components. Is there a second? I'll second. Awesome. So Commissioner Thomas uh, moved and Commissioner Zimmerman seconded that uh, the HLC prepare a letter in support of the Travel Oregon grant for wayfinding signage. Uh, Commissioner Thomas, is there any discussion, any additional discussion? Yeah, I think I've covered it all. I mean, there will be, you know, possibly some other, other components, which would be um, some actual informational signage at some of these locations. Um, we're just not 100% done with the budget and write up. Awesome. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Marcus, if you'd like to speak, you are allowed. <laughs> all right. Hearing no additional uh, discussion, uh, we can vote um, on the motion to write a letter of support for the Travel Oregon grant to do wayfinding signage and interpretation. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Awesome, the motion passes. Uh, Kimberly, if you can assist me in preparing that letter, uh, that would be much appreciated. Um, awesome, is there any other, uh, any other discussion items or updates on people's projects um, that we have? I believe we have a link for the uh, photo history contest, or not photo history, um, historic photo, Salem snapshot, whatever uh, photo. I don't know if anyone's on that committee here. We have received our first photo submissions, just as an update for that. So I received two. I haven't looked at them yet, but we've received two so far. That's awesome. Cool. Um, any other discussion or no, any, I'm sorry, any other work plan um, items that we'd like to cover? All right, hearing uh, nothing, we can move into the newsletter update. Uh, I'll pass it to Zach. Uh, so the newsletter, um, I've got most of the content. The only thing that I have left um, is um, to, Kim had already written an article that she was going to send to Jamie, which just happened um, <laughs> for editing. So hopefully um, we can get that. And then the only other um, update for that is we're looking at um, doing the digital portion of the newsletter through a MailChimp service. Um, so that should make it a little bit easier to format, which will hopefully make it so that we can have later due dates, but uh, just because I won't have to spend as much time formatting, but that's kind of um, the only other update for the newsletter. I'm hoping to get it out here probably in the next week or two. And then um, at our next meeting, we'll discuss topics for the next newsletter, unless someone has something, a theme that they want to jump with right now. When is the um, next newsletter, uh, when is it going to be sent out? Let me double check that. I want to say June, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, our summer. It's our summer one. Yeah. Um, but there cool. Yeah, so our next one, um, I'm hoping to receive um, the articles June 1st or the first week of June is when I want to have everything so I can compile it all. So we've got a little bit of time. I think awesome. that in years past we've done in the summer one uh, featuring who won all the awards. So oh, yes. We've done that before. Awesome. Thank you, Zach. Uh, hearing, are there any other discussion items? All right, hearing nothing, we will move into the Historic Preservation Officer Report. Kimberly. Well, I don't have a whole lot today. Um, and I was actually going to ask um, Jamie or Jessica, or you, Tracy, I don't know if you've been, to talk about NWAC. Do you want to talk about that? Because that's going to happen between now and our next meeting. To Jamie, I'm going to vote Jamie. <laughs> Jessica I just, I just used to like report today. So let me pull up my email that has the actual date on it, and I can help. Yeah, it's April um, 7th to the 10th, I think. Yeah. Um, so the Northwest Anthropo Anthropological Conference is free this year, but it mostly pertains to archaeology, but also deals with other cultural resources. Um, cultural landscapes are some of it, um, tribal consultation, all those kinds of things. And it's free this year. So it's a great time to attend and kind of see what everyone's doing. Um, 
I'm not presenting this year, thank goodness. Jessica, are you presenting? No. No, one of, the, one of the first years I don't have to present or run any meetings. Me too. Tracy, are no. you presenting? No, but it's um, if you're interested in things associated with archaeology, the tribes, historic resources in general, it's a kind of a good one to check out. And I don't think they have an agenda up yet because they're still accepting abstracts, but it's, it's a fun meeting and it deals mainly with the Pacific Northwest, a um, little bit into Canada, Idaho, which is not technically Pacific Northwest, a little bit into Montana, Nevada. Yeah, so it's just, it's a, it's a regional conference. It's usually a bit of a smaller one on the scale of what other archaeology conferences are like and a little bit more, a little bit less formal, but yeah, this is the first year it's going to be free. So yes, um, it's, yeah, in virtual, obviously, yeah. And uh, so, I mean, it'd be great to register yeah. and you can at least get the agenda and see if there's talks yeah. that you're interested in, in, in yeah. listening to. Yeah, so we'll share it. We'll share it with everyone. So. You can also, check it out. I'll put my other hat on. There's also great affiliated organizations that you can join while you're part of it, like the Association of Washington Archaeologists or the Association of Oregon Archaeologists, of which Jessica was the former president. <laughs> and you are the current treasurer. Yeah. Give me money, please. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, if uh, Kimberly, if we could get sent a, a link to that, that'd be awesome. And while we're sending out links, sorry to interrupt your staff report, um, can we also send out a link to the historic photo contest with that so everyone can share far and wide? We are not eligible, but your friends are. Kimberly, did you also want me to talk about the Veterans Memorial thing? Yes, please. And then I'm going to make you, I'm also going to ask if you could talk about the Heritage Conference. And I mean, okay. can you do everything? <laughs> Thank you. Sign up for the Heritage Newsletter, please, at the Oregon <laughs> Shippos website. Um, so the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, which our office, which we reviewed two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Uh, no, last month, the month before. December. The months all run together. I'm sorry. December. Working and living at home, um, which we reviewed in December. Um, it went before the Parks Commission, which is the final approval that was needed before they can begin um, work on things. It was a very controversial discussion. Um, there, it was a very long discussion. It was, I think, almost two hours um, of discussion on the Veterans Memorial as far as whether it should even be in a state park, um, whether the imagery was appropriate, whether the messaging was gonna be appropriate. It did end up passing, but there are a lot of caveats on that passage, including stuff surrounding the actual messaging that will be going out and they will have to um, create an advisory and stakeholder group to, to look at all the messaging before state parks and state parks will have to approve it. Um, they'll also have to do tribal consultation on all of it once they actually get that going not just on the ground that's being disturbed, but also on the messaging that will be happening in the state park. So um, it was very interesting. It was, it was um, there were some people that were very upset with it and there were some people that were very excited by it. And, but it was a very interesting discussion. I also saw there's a, a bill in the legislature right now to, to designate the land for the, the monument it, at the Capitol. The bill, I believe, would designate the southwest corner of the park for a veterans memorial. Didn't approve. It wouldn't approve the current design. It would yes. say you have to put the next one up. It just would say that there will be a veterans. There will be a Vietnam veterans memorial here. Yeah. So no, just a lot of moving pieces is what I was. Yeah, and it was in the legislative session the last time, but with the walkout, it didn't get it didn't officially pass. So it's back up again, although there's also been walkouts this time. Um, but they, everyone kind of believes it will pass. So I think um, the Parks Commission was made aware of that when they were voting and, and looking at it already. So anyone have questions? Thank you for serving as the liaison. I think that was what your title was. You were something, you were representing. Something that the 
state parks made up this group and said someone from Landmarks Commission will be on it. So yeah. yeah. Um, the Heritage Conference, I don't think it's called that, is in April, the end of April. And it, do you know? It's do the you summit know? this year, I believe. Um, last year was supposed to be the Heritage Conference, but it was canceled because of COVID. This year it will be the Heritage Summit. And it is about, um, I believe it's about inclusion is what it's about. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Kimberly. Um, that's all I know, quite honestly. I'm, I'm in the office that plans it. It's about inclusion. I, I think it will be all digital. digital. It will be all digital for sure. And it usually happened, it'll be happening in uh, usually in April or early May. Yeah, I've got, so April 29th to 30th, it's called Collaboration is Key. That's the theme. Um, and it will it be online. And so we'll, we'll send you, we can send you more information. But I think it'll have a lot of stuff about a lot of the different groups that we work with. It's not just about, it'll be about commissions and um, nonprofits and working with agencies and working with, so it'll be, if you're anyone that interacts with those kinds of things, it'll be really good for you. Cool. Usually pretty good. And the fellowship awards will be handed out and those are always fun to see too. Thank you very much. Uh, so the, the only other thing I wanted to share with everyone uh, was as many of you know, some of you don't because you're new. Um, we have uh, been celebrating the Qingming Festival in partnership with uh, Salem's Chinese community since 2018. And for those of you that don't know, uh, we did a project out at the Pioneer Cemetery at the Chinese Shrine. Our event last year, which was April 4th, 2020, we were all set to go and then COVID. So we canceled it. Um, given the latest um, unfortunate um, incidents against Asian Americans in our community and also across the country, uh, several members of Salem's Chinese community have reached out to me and asked if we could celebrate Qingming this year in some sort of a, a smaller fashion, maybe broadcasting it through Facebook Live, so, something like that, um, in order to do something positive and to show support. Um, so right now, internally, we're trying to figure out whether that's even feasible. I don't know if any of you have seen the condition of the Pioneer Cemetery after that's the storm, which was really, it was only a month ago, right? A little over a month ago. So, uh, so we're kind of waiting to hear, uh, we have, uh, we're looking into a backup location, potentially the Peace Plaza. So, so, um, and the, the tentative date, it's the same day, April 4th is the same day as Easter. So we were looking at the Saturday before that, so April 3rd. So um, it wouldn't be like events we've had in the past where we've had about a hundred people there, of course, because we just can't. So if we are gonna do it, we'll let you know. And um, you can look for information from Andy. I'm already roping Andy <laughs> to help out um, if we go ahead with it. So I just wanted to share that. And that's all I have, Tracy. Yeah, thank you, Kimberly. I think um, I think that's really important. I was going to kind of close out with that, so I'm glad we'll ask you about that. So I'm I'm really glad we're doing that. And I see your hand, Commissioner Kerdeman. Um, I, I wonder, Andy, if there's any way for us to on the Facebook page besides just advertising what we're doing, um, draw some attention to exclusion acts um, and the the history of. Uh, racism and violence against Asian American communities in Oregon or in Salem. Um, and just, you know, that we, that we need to move forward from that. So I don't know if there's any content you have available on that. Um, but this is not new to today. Um, and God willing, it will, it will end, but, uh, Commissioner Kerdeman. I was just going to say, um, Kimberly, uh, the contacts that you have, uh, that are requesting uh, this event, um, I'll probably be reaching out to you. Sorry. I'll probably, I'll probably be reaching out to you to to you soon to um, get some contacts for a a project that's going to need some mitigation that has a Chinese component to it. Oh, wonderful! Great. Great. Awesome. Are there any other questions or comments for Kimberly about her officer report? 
Cool. Well, uh, thank you guys. For, oh shoot, I like put my script away. I was like, oh, we're done. I have to actually close it out. So uh, if there's no other items, uh, we will adjourn. Thank you guys all for coming to the March meeting. Um, see you in April. Exciting. Uh, excited to hear Commissioner Cottingham's uh, presentation and everyone have a great uh, rest of March. Thank you.